Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am back with another installment, just looking um, to build up a junk journal, different things that you can do in a junk journal. Um, as always, you know, my entire playlist will be listed down below um, if you want to see anything. And let's just say that. Um, but the ones in the beginning, of course, show how I do my covers. Um, that's always pretty standard. Um, how I sew my signatures, um, that's pretty standard. Um, choosing papers, types of papers that you can use, um, and so forth. Now, of course, you know, you can always do stuff different. It, it's up to you. That's the beauty of um, a junk journal. And you can see with this one, these are just different things that I have shown or will be showing. So um, here shown how to make your own type of pocket really it's like a library card pocket and this one i've just stuck here and i've embellished um, just using some stamped images um, because as a card maker um, i've got lots of stamps um so and with these i can just create my own images um and, and create my own ephemera pretty much um, this here is from a tim holtz ephemera pack um, so I have that in here. Here's a, a pocket that I've made, some tissue paper. These actually come out. Um, so that's a pocket there. Just some, you know, again, I love tearing paper. I love the look. I'll be adding more pockets in there. Showed you how to make this tag that we made into a tuck. Um, showed you how to make these foldouts and those paper clips. Um, but that's just another area that um, you're recipient can journal on got your belly band this folds out here's another pocket that we've put in and again there's all kinds of little tucks that are throughout there to um, adhere stuff your center pocket this is where what houses your two tied off strings after you sew in your signature and then this is just a pull out these are pockets as well um, this is something that I'll be showing this is actually a tea bag um, I used to drink a lot of tea, a lot of loose tea. Mm, yeah, no more. Coffee, that would be it. Thank you. Um, so I have a lot of these tea bags. Believe it or not, I used to buy them by the tons. Um, so now I, I can use them in here. So it's already got a pocket. I take the strings, I just tie them off, let them dangle, and then I embellish it. So I'll be showing you that. Here's the envelopes that we did. And across that belly band, that little tiny lip there holds on to it. We showed you how to make a tab coming off the tab. I was inspired by um, the YouTube channel, um, Junk Journal Ideas, um, which will stay linked down below as well. And then there's also more journaling with some lined paper in there. And that just folds over uh, the paper. I'm going to be creating something here that I'll be showing I'll be creating something here because that's what my notes are for here. This is what I'm actually going to show you today. Believe it or not, that's a coffee filter. And then I'll be showing you a flip out very much inspired by uh, Wendy's Junk Journal Adventures. Um, I absolutely loved uh, some of her ideas when it comes to her flips. Um, and then this idea came from Gail. Um, I am going to chop up her last name, so I apologize, Gail. Um, Agostinelli, I'm saying that wrong. So I will make sure that I look that up and my phone's ringing. Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. It never fails. Phone rings. So I'm going to show you this and it, it is, I'm sure Gail Agostinelli, um, she comes up with some great, um, ideas. I could watch her literally all day when it comes to this on how you can make ephemera and everything else. And there was someone, a video that I was watching of hers. And again, I'll try to find it and link it down below. And she pulled out these, these are actually coffee filters and she pulled them out and they were, I believe sent to her if I'm not mistaken. And they had dyed them and these awesome looking colors. And she just had an absolute ball with them. Um, so it kind of inspired me to come up with different ways to use them and what you could do 
with them. You can see we have a lot going on here. So we're building this. Um, you know, we're creating our, our ephemeras, we're creating our tucks in our pockets. That's what I'm focusing on now because then the tags and the cards that I put in here, um, that's different type of ephemera. I do make it um, when it comes to tags and ATC card sizes and those index cards that I had shown you. But then there's also other pieces, you know, that I either print down through digital prints because um, I like the look or there's other types of stamps that I have that are that size to make them look like postcards and we'll be getting into that. So again, actually going to focus in, you can see we only have a few more to finish this. And then I got, I should put a tuck here or a tab there. So I make sure to show that because I'll forget. <coughs> All right, so we'll put that there. Okay, so let's get into what this looks like and how I did that. And again, it can be something very simple. I have so many pockets or elements in here that have layering, that have digital downloads or stamping or colors, all of that. So this I just decided to keep plain. And that's the beauty of this, just to have something that looks plain, but can add a lot because you've got so much, so much else going on in your journal itself. So coffee filters, um, they can be whatever coffee filters you want. You can get them at the dollar store. Um, if you drink coffee, yay, you have them. If you still have this type of coffee maker, um, I know everyone's probably got a Keurig. I'm not really into the Keurigs. Mine kept on breaking. So I go with one with the metal filters that are inside. So I used to have one of these, um, so I actually have tons of coffee filters, and plus I have tons of coffee filters too because of card making. You know, used to use these, still do sometimes, depending upon the color that I'm using. You know, you stamp your image, if you know what I'm talking about with Versamark ink, then you pour your powder over, and I would let it fall into this, and then be able to fold it up and put it back into the pot. So sorry about that. My phone's just going to go off every once in a while. There's you know, work, you know, got to have that horrible full time job. So let me, let me put that on vibrate. There we go. I'll always see it. All right. So I always tend to get the craft if I could. I did always really just like the color. Um, again, it's all about the color for me, but again, you can use any color that you want you know coffee filters they're really not super bright white they are kind of an off white i wish i could find um wait a minute i think i do hold on let me walk away for a second you know i've got to do that at least once right right oh here we go so coffee filters you know they're not you know here's here's a white one it's it looks white but it's it's like an ivory so you can use any shade that you're you're looking for you can tear these um you know you you can put a rip in them so that is very possible um which is nice because you get nice little tiny fuzzies going on there um i just do when it comes to my journal it's less staining i mean you can stain these now by all means you can take a white one i always keep um, a spray bottle filled with coffee. I just shake it up, you know, make sure the color is going on around in there. I'll spritz it. And again, just by doing this, it, it won't take long, um, to dry. I'll sit there and I'll pat it, get the coffee through it. So now my hands do smell like coffee. And then I'll just real quick set this aside to dry it won't take long by the time i'm done doing what i'm doing i should be set to go um, sometimes i do that with my papers as well you know if i'm looking like if i'm doing those fold ups i'll just grab a piece of paper put it down spritz it with my coffee and then i'll dry it so it gives me a different look because i'm heat setting it because i'll use my um, heat tool to dry it um, so a different look than what you do when you bake it in the oven um, but it's kind of cool. You still get the crinkles because we got to have the crinkles. 
um, and, and all of that. So let me set this aside and probably by the time I'm done showing these little tiny things, we will be at this one. Also by wetting it, you can see it becomes very flat. Um, it doesn't have the angle to it anymore, you know, and again, the heat tool that I would use is my Ranger. And again, I'm just, I would literally just sit here and go over this. This will take nothing to dry um, because it is so thin. Uh, this heat tool will actually go literally right through it. I mean, this is almost dry now um, with the time and it took less than 30 seconds. So that just saves some time as well. Now I do suggest having towels around because now I got coffee all over the place. Um, it will get crinkly. Um, it'll get that crinkly look and that's how you know that it's dry. So I know this right now, it's not as see-through either. So you'll be able to see that. And I know just by the feel of it, she's dry. So again, about a minute, that's all that took. Cause again, I'm not soaking it. And now I've got a coffee look to that. So if you have the white ones and you want to use some, please feel free. Or you can get these at the dollar store. I have found the craft ones at the dollar store as well. And when I do, I soak them up. Um, but if you're looking for them, I mean, again, stuff like this, I'll go to Amazon for. Um, there's 200 in this one. It's the size 8 to 12 cups. So I do get the larger ones. And again, you can see these are the, um, there's 150 in here and, and it's got an ivory look to it. So either one is absolutely fine. But since I don't use that system anymore, I'm like, okay, I gotta find a way. And Gail provided it to me. So again, thank you, Gail. So there's a lot of things that you can do with these. Um, actually, one of the things that you will see what I do with this is make it part of my cover. So by taking this and folding it in half, just like that, I can then take this and set it right over the edge and cover up my sewn signature if I wanted to. Again, and then I can put lace over this, but this can be, this is an awesome foundation when you are decorating your cover. So that's one thing um, that you can do. So stay tuned for that. Um, <clears throat> after you fold this in half, you can also make this one of your pages in your signature. You know, again, as you're folding your papers, you would put this in and then just keep laying your papers. It'll just give you a moon, a half moon within your signature. So that would be kind of cool. So again, lots of things. Again, by adding a wet source, whether it's water, if you don't like the coffee or the tea stained, you could have this just filled with water, spritz this, and then you'll get that, hear it, hear it, crinkly sound. Okay, so lots of choices. Um, that you have here. So one of the things though that I like to do is just taking the coffee filter and just rubbing around it. I do like the folds of this. Um, I think it creates a really cool effect. Again, if I wet this, it'll go flat automatically don't have to iron it now I could take an iron to this and it'll flatten it out but I really do like um, the way this forms around here so one of the things that you can do is I like to take this and I'll fold it in half if you're just looking for a plain cover take that fold it in half and then I'll tearing this up and then I'll fold it in half again I will grab my glue and I will put my bead of glue down, a very thin line. For this, I will use my art glitter glue um, and not my Fabri-Tac. 
but our glitter glue is just fine for this. So I make sure my edges are lined up and then I go through and just keep pushing it down, but I'm okay. I mean, first of all, that's kind of cool. Hello. Um, but then what I can do with this, I can stamp this. I can ink the edges because of course we can, we can always ink anything. And this is something that, um, as I said, Gail um, had shown when it comes to that. And there you go. You can add, you know, some of your digital prints or um, some of your stamped cutouts that you have or some die cuts and put that on there. The beauty of this is that you have multiple pockets. So if you take this and put this in your journal, let's say we put that down there, you've got one two, three, and then a fourth pocket if you just put glue here and here. So that's kind of cool. You, you actually get four pockets as you're going around. You can also take one of these, and again, you can have fun with the folds. You can take this, fold it in half. We can fold it in half again and put it in your signature. All right. So that when you put it in your signature, then, because this would be your center, you now have two side pockets, set it down towards the bottom. And now you have two side pockets coming in. So that's an option as well. And we'll show you that in the future video. All right. Again, just to give you ideas of what you can do with these, something so simple and you can have tons of them. Okay. What I also like to do is I'll take this and I'll create a different fold. So if I take this like this, and then if I just put glue down on this edge, again, very thin bead, I'm gonna flatten this up and now I'm just gonna make sure that I'm even with this. I now have a double. So, I still have a pocket here if I want. I have one down here. I have one here. And then of course I have one in the back depending upon how I put it in my, on my page. And that's exactly what I did with this one. So I've got this different look. I do like the plainness of that color. I think it would add a lot. Again, it's just something that goes on your page um, doesn't need a lot of bright colors, layering, and so forth. It kind of does that itself. Now, I do think if I dig into this as well, dig into my white ones or ivory, whatever you want to call them. All right. Grab one of those. Let me put this out of the way. And if I just take this again, I just like to smooth it out. Do that on both sides, not perfect. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. And I'm gonna add my glue. And then again, I'm gonna fold it down. Make sure the edges are lined up sure the glue's adhered. If I look at this and put this into the journal, the white, if you're using cream or white paper, looks just fine. And if anything, this looks like a piece of fabric or you can make it look like a piece of lace. So don't be afraid of white. I know when it comes to my journals, you know, usually it's my laces or anything like that, but this would be a beautiful accent just to make that come off the page. Does it mean, of course, we cannot, we can always come in with our vintage photo or any color that you're looking for and just add a few swipes, nothing crazy, or you can add as much as you want. And there you go, you, you've added that extra color. So don't be afraid of this white. You know, I have white sheets in here you know, I have the, 
the tracing paper that's in here. Here's a piece of white paper because I didn't coffee stain it all the way. I have the differences in the levels. So again, I do like the mixture of the of the white and the ivory. Um, I do like that mixing anyway, if you've seen any of my card videos. But one of the other things, again, I don't want too much to sit on this, but I do want something to come on that. So what I do like to do is add a stamp. So this stamp is from um, the Papillion, I think I pronounced that right, I'm, oy vey, um, from Stampers Anonymous, and it's this one here. I just love all of the different textures, the fonts, um, and so forth that goes on with this. So I just set this down on my table. I grab my Potting Soil Archival Ink because it's very rare that I go into other colors. And if I do go into another color, it's the black, um, which that one will be coming in here soon. So I just make sure that's inked up. I don't have a coffee filter in my hand. Imagine that. All right, let's grab one. Of course, I got ink on there now and it's taking me forever to separate this. Okay, I'm just gonna real quick flatten it. Again, doesn't have to be precise. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to switch over. Gonna switch over there. I want to make sure that as much of it is covered that I can get covered. So I'm just stamping all over this. Placing it down. You will get inky because trust me, you will miss the whole thing. I'm going to do second generation. I'm going to do first generation stamping. But you can see I'm just making sure that all areas are hit around the edges. So you get that texture going across your, your filter. Now, if I wanted to add something darker, I always wait for that. So now I'm going to fold again. So I'm going to fold her in half. And now I'm going to start looking. So this one's going to fold the other way. I just was looking at this. I really liked that. I wanted that to show. So I'm going to bend this up. And it's just going to be a tuck pocket going a different way, which is totally okay. I'm going to add my glue. I'm going to bring this up. Close that. Make sure it doesn't stick because of course it will. Do my creases. And now we just have our own decoration going on that. This is at the point where if there's a certain section, like I love this section here, um, that number, the Paris coming down, these beautiful squiggles that come across. If I didn't have that going across, I would grab my black and make sure I would hit that. And you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Yep, I'm reaching over. So now I'm going to be precise in my inking. So I'm just hitting that Paris and covering that. I'm going to tap along the outside of it just to lighten that up. And I'm going to try to be specific. So I want it to go along this edge. So I'm going to do that. Again, once you put your paper down, you got stuck with it. So keep our fingers crossed. Let's see. Oh, I like that. Yes. So again, and it even went up on this second one. So you've got that difference that's going on, and I still save that. I can come in with my distress around the outside. And then that can sit in my pocket. 
So, as you can see, you can do a lot with these. You know, nothing, nothing is, is a stop at all. I mean, I could even take this if I wanted to and just set that in there as well if I wanted that pocket to continue up. So, or I could actually set it right on top of that and now I've got this fan coming across that to just add that white and I've got all kinds of pockets going on in here now. So it's really cool. So this will actually expand out like an expanding folder. So that's really cool. Um, you know, again, something different. So something so simple, something that I used to use every single day um, can turn into a wonderful element in your junk journals. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is one of my shorter videos, which I am really surprised. Stay tuned to see what I do with this. Um, and as I said, just some more ideas. That's what we're looking at. Um, as I said, the playlist will be listed down below if you want to see the other videos when it comes to my junk journals. As you can see, I'm showing how we're building on that junk journal. And you will also, I know a lot of people have been asking, um, because for a while there, they weren't seeing it. Am I continuing to add to that junk journal? Will they be able to see that junk journal completed? And by all means, absolutely, you will be able to see it. That'll be the last video where I'll just do a page through on that real quick um, so that you can see what that looks like and when it'll become available in my Etsy shop. Because as I build these, I'm taking a little slower on this one. Um, they will be available if you're interested. All right. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, all the products that I've used so far will always stay linked down below. They are nine out of 10, my go-tos. If I add something new, um, I may remove something. All of the people, or I should say some of the people, not all of them, there are many that inspire me um, through the junk journal process are listed down below as well. Um, because I must give them credit. If it wasn't for them and me watching them and being inspired, I wouldn't have taken this chance when it comes to uh, my junk journal journey. So, and that's what it is. Um, so I say thank you um, to you guys and to you guys as well that take the time to watch. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If there's something that you want to see, always leave that down below too. I'll make a note and nine out of 10, one day you will see that. So thank you so much everyone for stopping by, taking the time to watch the video. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe. So you make sure you hit that button and make sure you hit the, the bell because then you'll know when the next video comes live. For those of you that are my subscribers and have been here for so long and those that have just joined me, I say thank you very much. I am very grateful and very appreciative um, for you sticking around, watching. I hope I'm teaching you things, giving you some tips and tricks along the way and a little inspiration here and there. I hope everyone is having a great day. And always remember, though, what is most important, always be creative.